So Jürgen, here at the 2017 CES, you have the production version of the N31 yep. DAC. You said it has many, many features. That's what right, did yeah. you what did you concentrate on in the design? Ah, uh, we concentrate on uh, jitter and on uh, the behavior of the oversampling filter. And you have multiple filter options. We have uh, multiple. We have three filter options. We highly uh, favorite our uh, st uh, filter, which is minimal phase. Right. Uh, without any pre-ringing and just uh, four cycles of post-ringing. So it's very natural sounding f uh, filter, which has a little bit of alias, about 70K. Right. And uh, also the stop and dribble is very minimal. And with normal music program, that little bit of aliasing will not be a problem. That, yeah, that's right, because uh, a natural music ha does roll up anyway in the, in the treble response and artificial music which is done sharply mastered by intention yeah. uh, it doesn't matter if you add some tiny more sharpness to it yeah yeah, yeah. so and we have a two fillers the one you prefer is minimum phase very yeah. short what are the other two fillers the other uh, is uh, uh, a sharp uh, linear phase conventional filter linear phase. with uh, conventional 0.45 to 0.55 yeah. uh, filter so it begins roll off at uh, 0.45 and has full stop end at 0.55 yeah. and has approximately minus 19 dB at half a sample. So this is a typical school book uh, yeah. digital filler which gives you no distortion if you measure it and gives you a flat yeah. sound stage. The kind of yeah. It produces yeah. the test that you, you, you yeah. showed me several years ago which I now incorporate yeah. in my reviews gives you a very nice clean graph yes. yeah. but that isn't the best sounding one you think. Um, that's right, yeah, because um, in nature there is no pre-ringing mm -hmm. and um, so your brain really detects that something yeah. is wrong. And the funny thing is that this ringing is at half Nyquist. Yeah. So if you add something to your audio band, I cannot hear half no. Nyquist. <laughs> I do not know if you still hear, well, but the timing, you hear the, yes. the, the ears for uh, timing variation much more sensitive. Well, so three to five times more sensitive. Yeah. So this does change the timing of the yeah. signal. Carl, Carl has Brandenburg from the Fraunhofer yeah, Institute yeah, yeah. said that you can't hear the frequency of a pre-ringing but you detect when it starts and your brain says ah there's an event yeah. and then you detect the peak of the ringing and now instead of one sharp imp clean impulse the brain is presented with two yeah. and that's why you get the confusion with the that's linear right, phase yeah, filter. Yeah. And so also do you have this this masking decaying effect in your brain. So if you have a, a loud impulse and afterwards some tiny re uh, response, your brain has this decay curve. Yeah. So it takes really time to decay, but uh, if you have just a small impulse in front, your brain isn't adjusted to this high level, right. so uh, will detect this. Yeah. Right, now for a DAC, in the old days you would just mm -hmm. have a SPDIF input or an ASCBU input, now you have to deal with USB and is there something particularly special you've done with the USB inputs? Um, we have uh, two uh, different USB inputs, uh, USB Audio Plus 1 and 2, uh, because we want also to give the Windows user the chance that they do not need to download a driver okay. and can use uh, this uh, code. And also we do not uh, need any power supply of current for the USB input because they are self-powered. We have an, uh, a special transformer winding for that. So they do not need current. And also in the handshake protocol, we send back that we do not need okay. uh, current. So, 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 so the USB inputs are galvanically isolated from the audio circuitry and the and the digital signal they processing. They're even optical circuitry. isolated. So okay. uh, there's, uh, uh, you can hear a difference if you just galvanic isolate or optical. Optical gives you a lower uh, straight capacitance and also with this uh, galvanic isolation, you hear a little bit of this uh, iron powder from the transformer winding, which doesn't exist in the optical isolation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just interested, you, you wanted to keep a class one input for Windows users. Yeah. 
is that really a big enough market, you know, to take a pay attention to? Because, and that's purely yeah. because you didn't want them to have to download a driver for you yeah, yeah, too. Yeah. There are a lot of lot of Windows no, users outside, mm -hmm. and I do not want to confuse them that they right. need to. Uh, yes, of course, I'm coming from yeah. the world of Macs, where, yeah, yeah. where they built it into the operating system mm -hmm. right from the start. Yeah. And yeah, do, does the DAC handle DSD data? Sure, they uh, do handle uh, DSD uh, 64 yeah. data uh, and PCM up to 192K. But with this uh, roll of filter, it behaves uh, compared to schoolbook digital filter like a, a 16 times FS yeah. Uh, uh, filter. Yeah. Anything special about the analog circuitry? We can also continue with the digital, <laughs> if you like, because um, after uh, re receiving the signal, we have three-stage uh, jitter reduction. We mm -hmm. have a digital PLL, which locks in with 10 kilohertz right, bandwidth. Right, so it's a wide window to, wide window lock. to, to lock in. And then we have a smoothing uh, uh, analog Lopez filter PLL with one hertz. Mm -hmm. Those smoothen out very nicely, nearly everything. And then we have an asynchronous readout buffer that really kills every uh, yeah. uh, incoming jitter. And then uh, this goes to our um, uh, digital filter, uh, which has um, intersample overload uh, function. That means that you can uh, drive uh, the signal to full scale digital input signal, and uh, you can have 3 dB more signal head in this digital filter, and we have 3.5 uh, dB overhead, so yeah. the signal will never ever clip. Yeah, yeah, because that's when with, with quite a lot of CDs, when they're raced to get maximum loudness, yeah. they're producing consecutive samples at dBFS, yeah. not in itself clipping, but you're saying the digital filter then has to reconstruct the waveform between yeah. those samples, yeah. and that can be 3 dB higher than nominal yeah, yeah. maximum yeah. level. And as I'm a master engineer for made for iTunes, I have some, some tools. I can measure every file, and the, they output uh, the sample overloads and the intersample overload in a, an Excel sheet and graphically. So mm -hmm. you will be surprised that even if you have a lot of files that do not clip, they have 10,000s of intersample overloads. Yeah, yeah. so but, but, I mean, back in the old days, the old Philips digital filters would have that built in. Yeah. And then when Burr Brown got into the game, you started seeing nothing over zero dBFS. Still. 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 Okay. I was going to ask you about, you know, this leads on to a question I wanted to ask you about, how do you as a DAC designer choose the parts you want to use? I mean, there are so many manufacturers, so, mm. many, so many chip founders offering you products to use. How, what determines your choice of the part? Uh, the basic specs needs to be good yeah. or very good. Uh, and then uh, also they have needs that I can exchange some parameters and tweak this part. So if you use a ESS Pro chip, uh, they have no intersample overload. They have this deep filter with pre-ringing. They have the clearly obvious uh, crossover between Delta Sigma and Malibic. These mm. are all points that I do not like, but the basic specs are really good. And when they allow me to manipulate these things that I do not like, then this is a good chip for me. Good. And the DSP, the signal processing, are you implementing it in a field programmable gate array or in a DSP chip? Uh, we were able, uh, with this listening test, to, to uh, come down to uh, 32 tabs. So with an ESS chip that has uh, 128 or something, uh, with reducing these tabs and uh, optimizing this power supply, we have achieved the same sonic results mm -hmm. with in-chip Oh. Use of the, uh, of Us the, using yeah. its own memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have to, to find out the coefficients that are not available in the data sheet, so you have yeah. to look around a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And back to my question about yeah. the analog circuitry. Well, Once you've done all this manipulation on the digital data and you've presented them to the DAC, and the DAC is a good performing DAC. Mm -hmm. Is that a current mode DAC? Do you then have to turn it into no, voltage? Where no, we have an, uh, just to, uh, use it as a voltage yeah. uh, driver and then have a passive low pass filter and then a very 
precisely one gain stage output buffer. Yeah. Yeah. And so we can get very high dynamic range. On the balance out, we have 132 dB dynamic range. Uh, That's extraordinary. That's yeah, yeah. So, but you can transport this dynamic range uh, all the way through, yeah. Yeah. No, well, thank you, Jürgen. So short. <laughs> oh, yeah, but thank you. <laughs>